So when I was in my final year of university, studying engineering, like many other students, I was trying to figure out what to do after graduation. The United Nations had just released the Millennium Development Goals, and all I wanted to do with my engineering education was to contribute. So when I got an offer that I was really excited about, I couldn't wait to tell my dad. And so I called him. Dad, guess what? I got a job. I'm going to join an NGO for a year in Ghana, and I'm going to use engineering to fight global poverty and change the world. There was silence on the other end of the line, and I could tell my dad was furious. <laughs> You see, my dad is someone who had had a lot of experience trying to change the world. As someone who left his country for political reasons, he knew how hard it is to change systems and what the consequences can be if you try. But as someone who also built an incredible career in Canada, all he wanted for his daughter was the very best: to just get a stable engineering job in Vancouver. <laughs> and so, when he finally spoke up. He said, "Monica, what are you thinking? <laughs> you can never have impact on these kinds of issues. Just forget about this idea and just get a job in Vancouver. I mean, you're not even getting paid." <laughs> I was deflated and angry. Here I am trying to do something meaningful for the world, and this is the reaction I get. There are so many issues happening in the world, and we need to use our engineering skills to solve them. Not working on, I don't know, improving the speed of photocopiers with some old white-haired men. <laughs> But deep down inside, I was thinking, maybe he was right. Maybe I should just be getting some real work experience, making some money. Maybe this was just a foolish idea, and maybe we can't. One person can't have impact. We all have limits, after all. Today, how many of you feel overwhelmed and worried about all the issues that are happening in the world? There's climate change. There's fires burning the Amazon. There's plastics filling our oceans. There's food security, hunger, migration, poverty, gender rights. And how many of you want to do something but just don't know how to get involved? You want to push the limits on these issues but don't know how. What if I told you this? You can do something. You can have impact. But in order to push the limits on the issues you care about, you have to push your limits first. I eventually built a career chasing impact, doing what I cared about, which was using technology for poverty and economic development. Today, I'm a product manager at a global internet company, and I'm focused on building for Africa and the next billion users. But on my journey to get here, I took a very unconventional path. And looking back, I realized that in order to push the limits, I had to push my limits, and I did that using these three learnings: one, push your limits, in order push your limits by breaking out of your comfort zone; two, push your limits by leaning into failure; and three, push the limits by thinking about scale. Let's start with comfort zone. I heard someone say, "Life begins at the edge of your comfort zone." I think this can be rephrased to, "Learning and empathy begin at the edge of your comfort zone." I first had this realization a few years before graduating. I was bored with my studies and wanting to do something meaningful, and so I decided that I was going to do a volunteer internship in East Timor for three months. I was going to make irrigation systems for farmers. From Vancouver, from my comfort zone in Vancouver, in my high street apartment, drinking my Starbucks co pumpkin spice latte, this sounded like a great idea. But I was clueless, and I had no idea of the context. You see, in 2003, East Timor was the world's newest country. It had just come out of a war and a horrific genocide. And the priorities for the country were in nationwide reconstruction, in rebuilding of institutions, and in displacement of people. 
farming skills was not exactly high on the list. But when I went there and I stayed, slept, lived in a rural community, built connections with the people, and heard their stories, I learned that their worry about their farms was not irrigation. Their worry about their farms was that they were unsure if after the war, their farms would be taken away from them again. I was pushed completely out of my comfort zone. And while I realized that my skills were probably not very useful here, this experience was so important to me because it helped me build empathy towards the complexity of, or towards just how complex the problems of poverty and economic development are. And the student wasn't going to solve it in three months. By pushing my limits and breaking out of my comfort zone, I learned the importance of putting yourself in the middle of the problem if you want to have impact. Lesson two, push your limits by leaning into failures. So remember that phone call with my dad? <laughs> of course I tried to prove him wrong, and I went to Ghana. <laughs> and I ended up staying there in sub-Saharan Africa, actually, for five years. Because I believed that all I needed to do was invest time. So I worked on a number of programs, all with the ambition of trying to have impact on the UN Millennium Development Goals. One of them was rural energy. One of my first projects in Ghana, I traveled to the northern region, to a village called Changnaili. And there I met a woman named Fatima. Fatima's husband was a maize farmer. And while he tended the crops, her role was to bring the maize for milling so that they could sell it as maize flour in the market. But for Fatima and many other women in Changnaili, there, no, there was no electricity, and therefore they had to walk for hours or days to the nearest community to have their maize milled. This is a picture of me with a few of the women from the community. And uh, about five minutes after that, I was taking that bucket fell off my head. <laughs> So anyways, um, I joined an organization, and we worked on a program to implement this machine, a multifunctional platform, a diesel machine that runs agro-processing devices and provides electricity to the community. The idea to, was to create women's cooperatives around this machine so that they could, they could create their own businesses and support their livelihoods. This sounded like a great idea. But the reality is, in many cases, this didn't work. The machines were often broken, found broken, a few years after we implemented them. There was no mechanics in the communities. Spare parts were hard to find. And often there wasn't enough, and often the women's cooperatives just fell apart. And so they would just go back to walking to the nearest communities to do their milling. In fact, in the five years that I stayed in Ghana and Malawi, most of the projects I touched didn't work. What was going on? Why were we so good at failing? You see, with a lot of these technologies, they're brought in as an external intervention. And while they solve an immediate need, they don't solve the root cause of the problem. It wasn't brought from the ground up. Local institutions weren't usually involved, and there wasn't enough capacity building. These technologies just weren't scalable. But in addition to the failure of these programs, I had a feeling of personal failure. Because I realized that all this time, I had been one of those foreigners. Someone coming from the outside and acting like a hero. I felt ashamed. And I would go back to Canada, and um, I'd feel embarrassed of the career choice that I made. I had no money. I had what felt like no valuable work experience. And all my friends had these like, great engineering and consulting jobs. And all that time, I just wondered, maybe my dad had been right all along. But what I didn't realize at that moment was that failure was so important in my journey. Because failure helps you see your blind spots. 
and it helps you understand how to focus. By pushing your limits, by leaning into failure, this taught me to change my attitude, change my approach, and also to work on the technologies that I could better predict with scale. So lesson three, push the limits by thinking about scale. So while I was working on all these rural development technologies that just weren't scaling, there was something scaling very rapidly in Africa. And that was mobile internet. Mobile internet in Africa, mobile internet was growing faster than anywhere else in the world. In 2009, there were just 40 million connections. But that number exploded in under 10 years to 400 million connections. But what was even more exciting was not only was this growth in mobile internet, but off the back of mobile internet, there was an explosion in grassroots tech innovation. Cities like Lagos to Nairobi, Accra to Abidjan were, had become centers for technology and innovation. Local talent were building companies that were addressing regional problems, opening up new markets, and creating jobs. For me, this was exciting because I could see that this could have real impact on poverty and economic development. And so, with all my learnings from pushing my limits, I decided that I wanted to join this movement of local people that were pushing the limits on mobile technology. And I decided that I was going to join an e-commerce company in Nigeria. Now, you might be thinking, e-commerce in Nigeria? <laughs> What does that have to do with poverty and economic development? Well, when I arrived in Lagos, I met this these incredible group of dynamic West Africans who had a vision for opening up retail in the country, proving the world that Nigeria was open to business and that there was an exciting and growing consumer base there. I saw this as an opportunity to impact economic development by creating jobs. But even more, Importantly, we were creating a marketplace for small, informal, offline retailers who had never had any kind of opportunity to scale their businesses in the past. We were offering them a platform to go onto the internet and reach new customer bases across the country. Now that is impact. This company, after its success in Nigeria, scaled to 14 markets across Sub-Saharan Africa, and became Africa's first unicorn, valued at over a billion dollars. Today, I'm a product manager at a global internet company, and I spend my time thinking about the next technologies that can impact people in Africa and other emerging markets. At my company, we always talk about 10x. How can you scale something by the power of 10? Well, with this in mind, here, I'm able to scale my impact even further. And by collaborating on the next generation of technologies that can Im impact human potential. So, was my dad right, or was I? <laughs> I think both of us were. I mean, I took, I took a much riskier career path than he would have ever liked but I feel like I learned way more than I ever could have had I stayed in Vancouver. But I don't want to pretend that I've personally solved anything. And when I look at all the issues in the world today, I feel like I haven't really had any impact at all. But then I realize that it's not about quantifying your personal impact. It's about choosing an impactful path that matters. By pushing your limits, going after what you're passionate about, and by choosing an impactful path, by definition, you are having impact. There are so many problems in the world today, and there is an urgency for all of us to work on them. So choose what you are passionate about. And what are the ways that you can push your limits today? Can you, one, push yourself out of your comfort zone, Put yourself in the middle of the problem, and while you're there, build empathy. Can you, too, take risks, lean into failures? You will fail a lot, 
but don't be hurt by it. You know, it will help you focus. And three, can you take what you're doing and find ways to make it scale? And then amplify that scale by 10x. I heard someone say, the future is not a place we are going to. It's a place we get to create. So push yourself. You may not feel like you're having immediate impact on the world, but push yourself. Chase impact. Find your own unique, impactful path, and you will be limitless. Thank you.